Shalom Rastafari. Salam to, to my brothers and sisters in Kedamawi Haile Selassie's name. Yes, brothers and sisters, this is another very important 120th. Um, this is Ras Ayadona Safari Wendem Wendem Yadon. I say Malcolm Ledeta Lij Tefari. Malcolm Ledeta Lij Tefari, which otherwise is known in the world as Haile Selassie the first earth strong amongst us is Rastafari and the birthday of his imperial majesty July 23rd 2012 now scripturally and biblically we know that in Genesis in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 there's a very interesting prophetic verse and let's just Bring this up for the eye then. We're just doing another study right here, and hopefully we'll return to this particular study right here. Let's go to Genesis. Quickly, let's go to Genesis chapter, the Orit, the Fitret, chapter 6, um, verse 3. And that's a beautiful video um, that we've seen uh, our Gaza 8 um, put up there, um, Ras Tobia. Um, Tefari Wendeme. That was a very beautiful video, and I hope you won't mind. We'll probably try to repost it at Ethiopian World Net at the main channel. But that's a very beautiful vid um, for His Majesty's uh, Earth Strong. And um, a point we want to make in this video the main point of this video is that it's the birthday of Lij Tefari, because theologically speaking, According to the Ritua Hymenot, according to the Tawahido um, Imnet, what's often called the Orthodox faith, but the true Ethiopic, the Ethiopic Church, the original church, that that special church of God in Christ. Ethiopia shall stretch forth our hands to God. Now this verse right here is um, verse 3, right? And here we have verse 3 of uh, Genesis. It says, Egziyabi harim mensesei besolai lezelalem ainorim arsu siga nawinna zemenochum meto haya amet yehonalu yehonalu ale. It says, and the Lord, or Egziyabihir, the sustainer in the Hebrew Yahweh, he who is who he is. Revelation shows us he is the king of kings, said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he. This should be really caps right here, the H. But anyway, for that he also is flesh has taken on our flesh, our humanity, Ethiopian, Hebrew. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So this particular um, Ledet Ken, or the Ledeta Teferi, we call Lij Teferi, the man-child, the son of man, and whom are we speaking of? We are speaking of Lij Tefari Mekonin. Now, when I say to you that Haile Selassie the first, right, was not born in the sense that most people take one who was born, that one who was born on July twenty third, eighteen ninety two, his name. His proper name is Tefari. Tefari, often pronounced as Tafari. Tafari. He was known as Lij Tafari, the child Tafari, of that noble bearing coming from the blackest Jew that the world ever knew. And we're speaking of the very root. So in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, when he says he is the, the root and the offspring of great King David, let us understand what that means prophetically. So it's true that in the world, the world would regard 
this particular day um, as Haile Selassie's birthday. You understand? But in spirit and in truth, we're speaking about the first power of the Trinity. The manifestation of the first power of the Trinity begins with Lij Tafari. All right? Then we have Aras Tafari. Right? And then we have Kadamawi Haila Shalase or Haila Salase first. So we have a manifestation of the biblical prophecy right here. That that little child that shall lead them. That one who is like and has come as a servant, right? Yet he is Lord of all. He is that ear, that ear, plenty potentiary, Ras Tefari Mekonin. And then the fullness of this revelation in the Ancient of Days and through the Ancient of Days. Now, in speaking of Abu Qadus, we have to begin at the very beginning. And this is why we say that Haile Selassie I was not, quote, born, but it's the manifestation in flesh of the first power of the Trinity. And this fully agrees with the testimony of Jesus Christos. Remember, Christ said that another would come, but first would come that Holy Spirit, but that Holy Spirit would manifest in the latter days as Father, as Abba. And this is very important when we look at John's Gospel, chapter 16, and we touched on that in the previous um, lecture and the sipka to the sermon and the teaching. All right. Now, what I want to show you right here, just to um, to to further bring forth evidence that it is the man child. So this day we often call as Rastafari Haile Selassie's Earth Strong. We might not call it birthday because the Rastafari, because of that inborn conception. You understand? Because that Tawahido within we know that well he wasn't born, so we say Earth Day. We say he manifested on Earth. But when he manifested, first manifested on earth, he was born as Lij Tefari, as Lij Tefari, as that particular man child. Now, how, how can we further prove this and verify this? Well, in, um, I think it's Timothy White's Catcher Fire book, which is mainly about um, Barahana uh, Selassie, Selassie, a.k.a. otherwise known as Robert Nesta Marley, Bob Marley. There's that first chapter which we have pointed to, and um, we might just print that up, that chapter one. It's a very good chapter one to begin with, right? And let us see if we can um, do a kind of a double screen right here of some, of, of some sort. So what we're going to do is read from over here. And this is from the Catch a Fire, the Catch a Fire book, all right? Um, because it's in this form, we can't really um, tell you what page it is, but that's the first chapter, the first chapter of the Catch a Fire. So those who have the Catch a Fire book by Timothy White can basically consult with this, all right? So here we go. Um, here it says, according to one story, according to one story, a local priest in Hara had visited the young Tefari, or Tefari, if you please, shortly after the death of his father, and asked him where he had gained such vast knowledge. Where did this young man-child gain such vast knowledge? This local priest had to come and find out. So Tefari, Lij Tefari, he replied that much of it had come to him at the moment of his baptism. Timket. Look at him. Right? At the moment of his immersion, his baptism in water, conducted according to tradition on the 40th day of his life. The priest who presided at the ceremony had opened Tethari's eyes had opened the man-child's, the man-child's E-A or Oinoch, Oinochu, right? His eyes with the first touch of holy chrism, of that holy um, baptism, that holy, that, that holy water, the holy chrism, like anointing, in other words. 
And everything, and this is the key thing right here, and everything, this is the line right here, and everything that ensued was comprehensible. Everything that ensued, this is the part that we're highlighting, everything that ensued was comprehensible to the infant. To the what? To the who? To the infant as if he had been an adult. As if he has been, as if he was an adult. So once that, once that baptism had taken place. Now I'm going to show you in Revelation what's the connection with this. What's the understanding? How how this revelation is scripture in manifestation, right? So it says that once again the priest who presided at the ceremony had opened to thirty's eyes. I know it you. With the first touch of Holy Chrism and everything that ensued was as comprehensible to the infant as if he had been an adult, as if he had been a waki, so he was a lidge. Everything became evident to him as one who is a, a Gnostic, one who is a full age, one who is a knower, right, an adult. That's according to the Amharic, a waki, all right, mature, in other words. The priest pronounced his surname. He remembered, and next his baptismal name. And then, of course, he blew softly in Tethari's face to drive off the evil spirits. At that instant, Tethari claimed, this is according to the claim, you understand, of the man-child, of Lich Tethari, whom this is the 120th um, earth strong, if you please, Right? It says that that instant Teferi claimed he felt himself enveloped by a golden glow. And as the priest began to anoint him, water touching his forehead, breast, shoulders, and all the other 37 prescribed places according to our Ritua Hymenot, the Rit'it Amin, or the correct faith the right and exact faith, the ancient Ethiopic faith, right? It says he felt his knowledge increase, filling him up like a vessel and endowing him with a great sense of clarity about creation and the final purpose of man. It says mark the perfect man because the end or the fitzame, the fulfillment, the perfection of that man is salam or is shalom, is peace, is holistic in spirit, in soul, in body, the fullness, all in all. All right? Now, this is from Kingdom Come Chapter 1. It's been out there for a while. All right? So there's no collusion of this testimony. Some will say, oh, you're just putting that together. Well, check this out. Let us go to uh, Revelation, right? Revelation. It reveals the truth, right? So let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to Revelation, the New Testament, right? Um, Ye Johannes Rai, the vision of Yah's grace. Let's go to chapter 11, all right? Let's go to chapter 11. Right? Because the manifestation, it's a chapter 11, is bankruptcy. Well, the manifestation of Jah is bankruptcy for Babylon. You know what I'm but only according to how we receive it. Because we are that church, that true Rastafari church of the King of Kings and his Christ. So actually, my bad, is chapter 12. Chapter 11 is another prophecy there. But it's chapter 12. This is what we had taught in the previous lecture. My bad. It's said to who, right? Um, anyway, here it says right here concerning um, Revelation, Johannes Arai, um, Asherah, Hulet. It says uh, this is where the Talak uh, um, uh, Melikit or Melikatil, right? Melikatil. Um, Besamai Taye, Tahayin, Te Gwanatsafa, Cherka Kagrochwa, Betacha Yalat. The Arswam lai ye asherahu leta kwa kubita kalili yahonilat anditsit nebrech. It says, and there appeared 
a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. If you look at our Ethiopian world net, what we use um, by, um, by our faith-based permission from uh, the Ethiopia Kingdom of God site, um, there's Ethiopia there, you know, the symbolic figure of Ethiopia, that crown, so that's that woman. There's also the heavenly manifestation of that in the stars, as above, so below. Now it says right here, and she being with child, right, she being with child, she cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. It says, Arswam and Sa Nebar Mitim Teiza Teiza Little Walida Techinka then it says right here it's going to now speak about and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads remember Ethiopia the invasion battle of Adwa remember Adwa that was four years after now think about what happened with Herod and the massacre of the innocents nearly two, two and a half or so years after Yeshua HaMoshiach Getach and after Getach and Jesus Christos was born. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't get it right, the right time, when Herod massacred the innocents, but he estimated, you understand, about two years or so. You know what I'm saying? Now, here they almost double that time when we have in 1896 the Battle of Ottawa which was to eradicate that man-child because we know that the Roman Catholic, the Catholic Church, had been studying the celestial formations for a very, very long time. But they tell you, don't deal with that. You know what I'm But they know the heaven. They're watching the heavenly clock, the heaven. So here it says, Leilam amilikit besamai taia in the home talak akei zendo sabata raso chna shirk endo chim nebarut. Be ra so chum lai sabata zodoch nebaru. Now it speaks about and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was as it was born. It's interesting when we look at Ethiopia's position and how many of the Goyim, the Faringoch, and the other um, so-called Europeans in their global white supremacy for a long time could not get into Ethiopia. They could not conquer Ethiopia, but they surrounded Ethiopia waiting for this particular time. So it says, Jaratum yesamayin kuakibit asiso iesabe wadamidurat alacho. Then Doim say to to a bewelle dechki ze hit anwan and di a bella little walid balata seta fit come right so they stood in front of her to eat up lich teferi to eat up that man child right to eat that man child as soon as he were as soon as he would be born, according to the, remember the heavens, you'll see how the heavens witness in the stars that we've published, um, reprinted actually again, um, goes into much detail from a Christian perspective, but there's a very important prophecy called points out celestial signs that occurred in 18, in 18, I think 92, and the book actually was published in 1893. You understand? So we have to put all that together when we're, when we're studying this, right? But verse 5, it says right here, in verse 5, it says, Ahazab binim, Ahazab binim, Hulu, the Buret Better Yigazacho Zen, Yalowin Lij, Wend Lij, Weladech, Lijwam, Wada Egziavi Herina, Wada Zufanu, Tenet. It says, and she, speaking of Ethiopia, the true and the new Israel, if you can receive it, if you over the connection, Kuvr and the guest gives you a foundation on that, the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik. It says, and she brought forth a man child, a wendlij, a male child, wendlij, weledech, 
who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Iron, lion, uh, lion, iron, Zion, iron, lion, lion of Judah, the oversight. And her child, Lijuam, and her child was caught up to what God and to his throne. Now, this is very important, this throne, because let's ask the question. For all those who have been studying and those who might disagree and think that they're biblical scholars and what we say is not biblically verified, what is the throne of God? What is the throne? They'll tell you it's up in the sky somewhere. Like where? Which part of the heaven? Is it by Orion or is it by Pleiades or where? Where is it? You know what I mean? You know, Arcturus, you know, what direction? You understand? No, the throne of God is established on earth. The throne of God is connected with great King David. You understand? So the throne of, of God, or the throne of Jehovah, is the throne of great King David. You understand? The throne of Jehovah, the throne of Yahweh, of he who is who he is, right, is connected with the throne of greater, of, of great King David's greater son, or Lij Tefari. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you look at this, Right, what the, what Revelation says right here, what Revelation says about and she speaking of of of, of the prophetic Israel, or really we can say the new wife of the Lord. You, you have to remember that what happened when he put away Judah and he put away Israel, you understand, and and that covenant that he made with Ethiopia and the Ark of the Covenant, almost in a kind of a sense is almost like the wedding ring, so to speak, of that covenant relationship you know you know, it was because when they say that the ark was stolen it's, it's really bad to say that because we don't find that in the Kupra and the guests we don't find that in the documentation that is, that's part of what you know the devil has come in with that slander and we've allowed that to say that the ark was stolen it was not stolen it was by the will of it was by the will of Ja. it was by the will of Yahweh and Yeshua, that that be done, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that was by the will, that, that the throne of David would be renewed in the highlands of Ethiopia, fulfilling that prophetic word of great King David. Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth for a hand to God, to Ha Elohim, to Hashem, Kedamawi, Haila Shalasi, to Haila Shalasi the first. This man child, now you know, you see the connection? Because it says, and her child was caught up to God. How was this child tenetica? How, was, how were they snatched up? They really say snatched in a sense. And to his throne. What's the throne of God? The throne of God is the throne of David. The throne of David is the throne of God. Because that covenant that was made with Negush Dawid, with great king David, with DVD, David. You know, but now when we look at, um, Kingdom Come, and this is a very appropriate chapter. In fact, the book is all right, but it's really this chapter that, you know, that we give so much thanks and praise, this chapter that we give so much thanks and praise for, because as we um, look at this chapter right here, let's get to the point that we were, right? It says, according to one story, we went through it, but let's get down to Paul, which the priest who presided at the ceremony had had opened Tethari, the man-child. Remember, the man-child was born, right, and was snatched up to God. Now, who or what is God according to the Scripture? According to Yeshua HaMoshiach, it says that God is a spirit, menfes, ruach in the Hebrew, menfes, and those who worship him must worship him in what? In spirit and in truth, right? In spirit and in truth. So this is the truth, that the priest who presided at the ceremony had opened Tefari's eyes with that first touch of holy crimson, and everything that ensued was as comprehensible, that means could be comprehended to the infant, as if he had been an adult. Overstand that. Now, the priest pronounced his surname, he remembered, and next his baptismal name, and then, of course, he blew softly in Teferi's face to drive off the evil spirits, according to the churchical tradition and the, and the holy custom. 
All right? At that instant, notice, at that instant, it says Tesari claims, according to the claim of his match, and this is from witnesses passing this on. It's not like today's Ethiopia, secular Ethiopia. People didn't go around lying. You know, because like if you were lying, you was dying. You know, where you didn't go around lying about these things. So that's all. This testimony is is very firm, and the scripture backs it up. At that instant, Teferi claimed he felt himself enveloped by a golden glow, and as the priest began to anoint him, to christen him, to anoint him, water touching his forehead, breast, shoulders, and all the other thirty-seven. So there's forty places prescribed places. He felt his knowledge increase, snatched up to God, right? The spirit of truth, right? Who will show you all things, right? He says he don't judge by the seeing of the eyes, but it's by the Holy Spirit. You understand? Filling him up like a vessel. So this is the vessel and endowing him with a great sense of clarity, clarity about creation and the final purpose of man. And we have the evidence of that in the teaching of his majesty, in his, in his utterances, in his wonderful counsel to us. You understand? So, when we say that Lich Teferi is the one who was born, that yes, this day does pertain in a kind of a secular or a non theological, uh, from a non-pure theological sense, but in a pure theological sense is the very same reason why we as Rastafari say this is his earth day, not so much his birthday. But the one who was born, is very clear, is Lich Teferi, right? This is that man-child. And we could go further as we did before into John chapter 16. And John chapter 16 shows the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But also, even in some of the Gnostic scriptures, it shows how Christ appeared both as the child, as that servant or that, or that so-called middle-aged so-called man or that, or that man, and then as that old man or that father figure or that ancient of days. So we have a full explication of the mystery of God in Christ in and through his imperial majesty and all praises be. So my brothers and sisters, once again, Melkam, Ledeta, Lij Tefari Mekonen, who has revealed himself in the person of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi, Haile Shalase. Shiume Egziari Her Nagush Nagesh Ze Iti 